All right, guys, so we made it home, and here's my lovely Sancha. For those of you who don't know, that means my girlfriend in Spanish. That's actually my soon-to-be wife, if she's lucky. Anyway, You're um, lucky. so I made it home. Figured I'd go ahead and make a proper video of how to clean fish. So what I would recommend, if you have it, a nice place to clean your fish. I'm not saying you have to have this kind of table, but it really does help. You could use one of those if you have one. But what you're going to want is your ice chest, trash can, up there. A fillet knife, which I have two of them out here at all times. A knife sharpener. And if you're recording yourself, a tripod that your brother bought you. That's really legit. Here's a lot of fish that were caught today. Um, there's some whoppers out there. These were all caught at Copan Dam. As you can see there, a big fish, huh? Put my feet right next to them. And I wear size 11, so there's some big fish. And then there's actually four of these are the ones I caught. The rest were given to me by somebody. My wife's stinky feet next to the fish. Jeez. She just gave it warts. See that? <laughs> what I recommend is an ice chest. This ice chest I found thrown away and I grabbed it just for this reason. What I would do before you do anything, y'all, is get your water hose and fill up your ice chest with water. And you may want to do this away from your porch. My wife's feet smell like fish all the time. <laughs> I'm sleeping on the couch tonight. <laughs> what you want to do is just fill this up with water. Alright, so the ice chest is full. I'm trying not to show my wife's butt cheeks coming out of her bathing suit. They're pretty white and they're blinding. So what you want to do is not get wet by your wife moving stuff around. And now we're going to release these fish. We'll do these big, bigger ones over here. So what you want to do with them is cut their tails off. And you want to do this before you cut them and let them bleed out. Ugh. So slimy. There's one. There's two. Blocking your view there. Oh. Well, thanks for checking. There you go. Tails cut off, and you throw them in the water, and you let them bleed out for a while. And you only do that with the big ones. There's another one. Cut his tail off. So it serves two purposes when you're doing this. One is they're not moving around everywhere when you're going to clean them because they've bled out. Two, the meat is a lot cleaner. Oh, you son of a biscuit.
Oh, okay. Just jump right out, why don't you? That's a big mama right there. Bigger than the ice chest, look at that. He's gotta be a 30 some odd inches. I don't know who it was. So now we let them bleed out for about five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever you choose. I'm going to start with the small ones, but what you do first, always, is sharpen your knife. I was cutting crappie last night, so the scales really do a number on your blades, so make sure you sharpen them. Uh, you can get sharpeners like this at Walmart in the sports department area, uh, where they sell guns and knives and stuff. You'll always see these there, so I'll just... Five good swipes. One, two, three, four, five. So now this is really sharp. Do not put your hand under it. So what I'm going to do is grab the smallest ones first, the ones that are dead and not moving. So here's a small one. He's barely moving. All the other ones seem to be moving more than this one. So how I start is, see if I can zoom in here. Okay, right, let me move this back just a little, okay. So right here, I go behind the fin. There's a bone right here. And I go from the fin all the way up until I can't go no more. And this is a good way to fillet um, so that you don't have to get all the guts out and all that stuff, so. Uh, Hopefully you guys can t get used to this. So here goes. So I grab the fish, front finger behind that fin, thumb behind this fin, and then my hand just basically holding the head. Go behind the fin, cut downward, and then tilt towards the head. And the knife will stop because there's a bone. I believe it's the spine that is hidden at that point. So once I go there, I go to one side, and I just cut to the other side. And it's it's behind this bone right here. You want to cut from where you stopped, right here, down to past that bone right there like that. That's all I do. Once I go there, if you look behind that fin, you'll see a left side and the right side, the spine's right in the middle. So I'll move that fin real quick. So you got your left side over here, right side here, and your spine's right in the middle. So what you want to do is put your knife on one side of the spine, go all the way down till you hit the ribs. Once you hit the ribs, you're just gonna kinda go up and down, cutting through the skin. 
along the spine until you can't feel no more ribs and the knife goes all the way down. Right here, it's gone all the way down. At that point, I lay the fish on his side, push the knife all the way through, okay? Once the knife's pushed through, you're gonna tilt your blade down towards the table. I'm not gonna bend it, I'm not gonna pull up. You want this angled downward, the sharp side downward, probably about a, not quite 45, uh, let me see, I don't know a bit. If you're looking at a clock, your knife sets, we'll go seven or eight o'clock right here. And you'll feel the knife rub against the spine as you're cutting. It'll kind of like, uh, kind of shake. And the reason why it'll shake is because it's rubbing on these vertebrae right here. So as you can see, that, that meat looks really nice and white because we bled it out a little bit. So once it's done like this, you got your fillet on this side. And now we got to cut it off the rib. So you just put the knife and go down along the spine right here. All the way to the front. And just dig in there until you can't dig any further. And you just work your way around the, those, those ribs. And it's not going to be pretty when you first do it. I get that. See if I zoom in a little more so you can see what I'm doing here. So right here. So the ribs are right here. And all I'm doing is just rubbing the knife along that meat right there. And then I cut. I don't go into the stomach. Once it's about to the bottom of the ribs, I'll cut that fillet off. So now we have this good fillet right here. Really nice fillet. So we have one good fillet here. That's all the meat you need off of this side, really. I mean, you got your upper spine bones here, your lower spine bones here, his ribs and his spines right there. And I just left a little bit of meat here. You got his belly meat, but he's too small. Some people like the cheek meat. I've never eaten it, so I don't know. So then we go to the other side, do the same thing. Put my knife down into this side of the spine. And I just kind of work it up and down. As you go to the back. get through the ribs right there you're gonna push that knife all the way through so it's all the way through you're gonna tilt your knife down towards the table rub against that spine don't go down because then you're gonna cut through the spine and if you have an electric knife that makes it a lot easier so then I split the meat here off of the ribs and I just cut straight down till I hit the ribs. This side you're not going to be able to see very much because my hand's in the way from that angle. So I will get you another angle here after a while. There we go. What I like to do is once I have that fillet where I want it, I'll cut right off the rib like that. Just work it off that rib. And there's a second fillet right there. And that one's uglier than the other one, but now all this right here. Now I left a chunk of meat there, but this is all trash. Didn't even have to get into his guts and spill them everywhere and make them bleed everywhere. So fairly clean, table's not even that big of a mess, and that's how you want to clean them. So here we go to another one. Try to do a zoomed in portion. So here, behind the top fin, go down. Go to one side. Behind the bone right here. 
straight to that cut. Here, straight to that cut. Go to one side of the spine. Just work your way up and down. So you get past the ribs. Right there. There you go, past the ribs. Turn it over, shoot the knife through. Rub it along that spine all the way through the tail. Then we're going to have this fillet right here. And you're going to work that front. I angle my blade towards the spine just to cut along that bone that's in there. You can hear me rubbing along the ribs there. And I just cut that fillet off of the ribs as I go down. There we go. And just cut that straight down. There's that fillet. And do the other side. Over here. Along the spine. Helps to pinch the spine as you're doing it. Get past the ribs, push that knife through. Rub it against the spine, all the way to the tail. go there. I left quite a bit of meat up here. Put this here. There's the other fillet. So I left quite a bit of meat right there. If you want to go back and clean it up, you can go back in there and grab you some of that meat off of there. Well, there's fish number two. So now you're probably asking, but Chris, how do you get the skin off of the fillet? Well, most people like to use these, and I used to be one of those people. I used to use these until these got bent and I was like, there's got to be another way. So you can do it one of two ways. So one way is I'll put my finger on the tail to this knuckle right here. I'll put the meat all the way to here. And then I dig my fingernail into the meat, put the blade down, and then I'll get to where the skin's at here and make sure you bend the blade cut along that skin and I kind of fold the meat over so I can see where I'm cutting as I go and another reason why it's good to do this is because you can see how deep you're cutting because if you go all the way to the skin all this red meat right here you're gonna get on your fillet and you're gonna have to cut it off anyway so cut down just enough. If you want this little piece on there, you can do it. Turn it around, cut that off, get you that little bit of meat. And then that right there goes in the trash. So now you got this fillet with that blood strap going down the middle. And all I do right there, I was told you need to cut this red meat out right here because it's what make taste the makes the fish taste nasty. So I will cut that whole section out. Some people cut it in a V just to cut the red meat out. I cut the whole thing out. So now all I have is beautiful white meat catfish. Cut the other side. Straight down. Take that out. And if you got a little bit of this on there, just cut a thin layer off that top. It's alright if you have a little bit like 
that little bit in it, that's not going to hurt nothing. And then the second way to do it, oh, I threw the blood stripe in the fillets you want to throw in the trash. The other way that I've seen people do it is they actually just go through the whole middle right here. Don't cut all the way through. Basically the same thing I did starting at the tail, but you start in the middle. And you cut at an angle going one way. Cut that fish off. So now you got this fillet with the stripe there. Then you turn it around. Do the other half. So now you got all this red meat inside the skin. Throw that away. And then now you can go in here and clean this up. Whatever you don't like on there, take it out. Turn it over. There's your stripe. So we're going to cut that out. So it's okay to have blood in there. It ain't going to hurt nothing. And then cut the other side. Like such. See, and I missed a little piece right there. Cut that off. So let me go zoom in. Show you a better angle. So here, you got your red stripe down the middle. Cut one side off. This is your good fillet. Put this other side off. Throw that away. And there's all your meat right there. And then back to my way. So do like such. How's the water feel? If any of you watching on how to clean pools, we'll give you a bag of fish to come clean our pool. There's all that trash. Cut the, red, the line in the middle out. Good fillet. Line in the middle out. Throw all that away right there. Good fillet. Come back over here. I don't know if you've noticed, but my table's clean. My hands aren't that dirty. I got a little bit of slime on them, but cut. Put all that red meat out. And like I said, it's okay if you leave a little bit, but if you have too much on there, if you have too much on there, cut it off because it'll taste nasty. And that's all I do to cut off the leftover. And there's your meat. Okay, looks good. So now from those three fish, I think it was three, wasn't it? Those two fish. We've got nice clean meat. And what you can do after you cut these is put them in a bowl of water. 
so it cleans all that extra gunk out of it. And then when I'm done filleting them, and after I let them soak for a little bit, I'll get the sprayer out of the kitchen sink and I'll spray all this real good and it actually gets a lot of the uh, dirt off of there. Let's grab another catfish. So I wanted to show you all what a fillet looks like when you cut too close to the skin. See all that red meat on there? That's what makes the fish taste nasty. So what I do to cut that off is I'll go back to that piece of meat and put it back at the angle and I'll just fillet a real thin layer off the top and that red meat usually will separate off of that so there's that red crap and so now you go back and fillet this how you do normally there's that one This other side here. There's that one. And if you can't get that off and you got a pretty good amount of meat on there, just go ahead and cut that. A little piece off. Because I don't like when mine has a little bit, but I can't get that off, so I'll just cut that little piece and throw it away. And so now you're back to that fillet. This was literally the next fish after I stopped the video, so. There's that fillet. Cut that red stripe out. Push it down. There's that one. Got a little bit right there. Don't really have to take it off, but I don't want any of it on my meat. So there's that one. Grabbing another fish. And you're not cutting all the way through. You're just cutting enough to cut uh, cut through that meat right there, so that it'll separate whenever you're cutting it at an angle. When you're cutting the fillets off the sides, it helps to get off the spine. Go all the way till you can't feel the ribs no more. And remember, you're feeling, you're not shoving the knife down his spine. You're just feeling the ribs, and you keep going until you can't feel them no more. I think I'm on his spine because it's not going through. There we go. Right there. So I was on his rib, on his spine. Push this through. Well, am I? Hold up. Ribs, 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 ribs. Feels like it goes through up there. There we go. On that spine. Cutting it down. So this one still had blood on him. Wasn't done bleeding out. That or he just died already and his heart stopped pumping so I wasn't able to pump out the rest of his blood. Cut that fillet off. It's got blood on it. And I left quite a bit of meat right here. So, like I said, if you want to go back and save that little bit, you can. To me, it's not that big of a deal. And then now we go to the other side. And really, guys, you only want to cut the tails off the big ones, and I'm talking about like, I don't know, four pounds, five pounds. Those are really the ones you, you really want to bleed out just because it, uh, oh, see, I messed up. I was too busy talking. So I'll come back, I'll cut along that spine, cut that little piece off. And if I want to salvage that little piece, I can. I might take a little bit off of there. 
But like little ones like this, I don't really bleed out usually just because they're so small they don't they don't really have that much blood in the meat. But it makes it easier cleaning the meat whenever you do bleed them out. You don't have to soak them as long. And all that jazz. So there's that fillet. Would have been longer, but I cut through right there. And there's a the catfish both sides. Trash. So this one, since I cut the tail off, I'm just going to do that one I showed y'all where you go through the middle. Just cut that layer and it's thick, so you want to cut a thicker layer off of the skin just because they have thicker red meat the bigger they are. So we got some skin left on there, so we'll go back and trim that off. So I'm going to trim this whole section right here off, just because that's the part that's on the, that holds the fins. There's that, and then all this is trash. Uh, this was that tail piece, I'm going to try to save some of it. Saved a little bit. Wasn't that big of a deal, really. This is showing you you can do it if you need to. If you want to make you a little bit of chicken fish nuggets, there you go. Put your red line, one side of it, second side of it. That fish is good. That's in the trash. Same thing with this one. Got your red line. So here's what I was talking about when some people cut in a V. They'll cut it this angle here. Turn it around. And they'll cut another V the opposite way. And then and then there's the uh, there's the red meat right there. And it's no longer in the meat, but some of them I found that it goes all the way through, so I just See, like this one has a little bit on the back side, so I just like to cut it out just to avoid it all together. So, ugh, I didn't even cut. So now we got this piece here, this is trash. And then I'm going to cut the other end off of this one. Just go down. And there's that piece also. Too deep again. Too much red meat on there. Your skin. Again, we got too much red meat on this one, so I'll find where I want to start for laying. Is usually right here where it starts to widen. Usually right here where it'll start to widen. I'll put my knife at a downward angle like this and just trim the very top layer of fish meat right there. And that red meat, like I said earlier, will tend to just catch and separate on its own. So there's all that red meat. And then there's your fillet. Then you go through and cut that midsection out again. So now we got this good meat here. Go back up here. And we got this good meat here. All right, guys, we're back to the big one now. And uh, 
Um, I guess you can see the whole thing. Right. He's uh, he's still bleeding out a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut him anyway, just to show you uh, how I cut him and see what it's like with a little bit of blood on him. So he's got all this fat right here. I like it. See all that fat muscle right there? It looks good. So under this this here again. Come down there. Come down here. If you want that meat, you can actually cut it by coming down and doing the same thing. Just go around because there's a bone right here that comes out this way like a diamond shape. So you just go around that and then you continue on cutting how I showed you. All the way down the spine until you get through the ribs. So we're going. Going, 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 going. Now the big ones, sometimes it's kind of hard to not hit their stomach. Okay, right there I'm all the way through. So I'm going to put them on the side. Push this knife through. Uh, another thing I forgot to mention to you guys. If this gets in your way, get you like some wire cutters. Um, these are shears. And cut his side fins off. If you can, jeez. There. So you can cut those off. Throw that in the trash. See if I can get through this one over here too. Golly. There. Okay. So now you can put them on the side and not worry about those fins being in the way. And you can cut all the way down his spine. This one's going to have a lot of meat on him. It's a fat one. So, you can fold that up and you can see where the blood is and I missed meat here. But like I said, if that is a lot to you, then go ahead and take it. If not, throw it away, whatever. Do his sides, do your cut. I feel like my knife is getting dull again. I feel like my knife is getting dull again. Flip them over to the other side without those fins to help you. There we go. So this one we're going to take his belly meat and I'm going to show you how to do that. So we cut him here. And again, if you wanted all this up here, here and these bigger fish are sometimes harder sometimes easier it depends on what you're cutting so here we go cutting along the spine here all the way down to get this fat just to show you all how we get this up here I don't really care for all this up here uh, so we we'll cut down cut down I mean, you can see the blood still coming out of this one. So we'll go all the way down. Cut this big old fillet slab off of this catfish. So here we go, big old. Go underneath. There we go. Big old slab of meat. Look at that right there. Big old chunk of meat. Nice. So then we're going to do the other side. Maybe not as sloppy, we'll see. Cut 
past his ribs, push through, all the way down the spine. There we go. I'm going to cut along the bones. I use this finger to push the meat away as I'm cutting because it kind of will start to tear off of the, uh, it'll separate from the ribs. That way I can cut it better and see where I'm cutting. And then I like to grab that big old chunk and right here I'll just start cutting along the ribs and my knife will stay along the ribs. Quite a bit of meat there, but there we go. We're hitting the ribs there, and so we have two chunks of meat now. And then, so like I was showing you, this meat right here, if you want that to get more meat off, go down. You'll see where it stops right here. So you go down right there. Same thing, work your way around the bones that are in there. Just keep on going back. Don't cut your hand, that sucker's sharp. Like that right there, and see that meat right there. Just cut down. Then we're gonna come down. Kind of hard to do this part. I just don't like getting this meat because it's just a pain. It makes it so much harder to get. And then you can fillet that part off, whatever it's attached to. And then there's that meat right there. So that's another good chunk of meat right there. It's a bite right there. Throw that over there. If you want that meat, like I said, I just hear back. I'm good for his. Stomach, a lot of people like this meat right here. Um, I already cut a hole there, but there's a plate right here for his bones and you want to cut through, don't stab yourself. Let's see if I can find it, hang on. So we'll go through this pocket that we made already. And what you want to do is there's a little hole when you cut down deep enough there's a hole right there you want to get into that cavity cut up along the ribs on the bottom side cut all the way down so there's that then you're going to come and get the front part of the stomach meat and this sort of got quite a bit on them actually I'll set that against my finger so I don't cut my finger there we go and you want to come up just under where his gill opens and come all the way up and work your way around these bones Flip them over. Ugh. And work this side. Just following all these bones here is all I'm doing. We've got this meat here. Now I'm going to his ribs. And he's got a big chunk of meat right here. And we're just cutting that down his the edge of his ribs right here. So there we go. So then here you're gonna have to separate all his innards off of it. So here is the belly meat, which is another big chunk of meat. And I cut this plate out. I don't usually eat any of this back here. 
I'll just cut straight across if my knife will cooperate. What the heck is my knife hit? Got some meat here, cut it off. Throw that away. And then you got all this meat. So this, you're going to do the same thing as you did with your fillets. You're going to cut in, don't go all the way through, and you're going to cut your meat off of the skin. Now this one you can go all the way to the skin. There's no red meat on this one. But I don't like to get this like all the way up against the skin because like I just did you can cut the skin and it'll stay on the fish. So there's the meat, there's the skin. Turn this around. Cut the other side. God, why is this for the door? Where's my sharpener? Oh, back to this side. Maybe this meat's tougher. And I'll put bend in the knife when I'm cutting this. Not real hard bend, just nice pressure. So now there's the bottom skin. Oh, back to this side. Maybe this meat's tougher. And I'll put bend in the knife when I'm cutting this. Not real hard bend, just nice pressure. So now there's the bottom skin. Now for the inside skin, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to cut this in half. So you flip it over, cut down to the skin, knife at an angle, cut one half off. There's your belly meat right there. Go to the other side. There's the other side. So this is a big chunk of meat right here. Big old, big old steak. You know this is a kid appropriate show. Okay. big chunk of meat and actually she's never said that to me ever Working this meat. There we go. So you can see I didn't cut as deep with this one, and that's because the meat's thicker, which means you're gonna have thicker red meat. And I don't take that little tail piece, that doesn't mean much to me, but see all that red meat in there is really disgusting and nasty and takes it off. So now we got this big old fillet. And right here is where one of his fin was, so I will cut that out, clean it up, and just check everything, make sure everything in there is good that I want to eat. Cut these little tail parts off right here, it's from the bottom fin. And then now we go to the red meat, right in the middle. Cut straight down. over, cut this piece I missed, try to get in my face, because they want my fish, and there's you a big old chicken strip, or fish strip. Red stripe. That's 
trash, and then here's your other fillet right here. We go to this big hunk of man meat right here. I'm gonna do the half cut so you guys can see that. Again, I don't cut as deep as I do the other ones because there's thicker red meat on this. Work your way all the way. And there's that one. Turn this over. And we're going to get the other side. Closer. And then there's all that nasty crap. Trash. Man, that skin alone had a lot of weight to it. So here's some parts I don't like. You see this extra junk hanging off here? I mean, I'm sure it's okay to eat. It looks fatty, but it looks dingy, brownish, dirty to me, so I won't eat it. And I already know my wife won't eat it because she's picky. And then there's another piece of it I don't like. I'll throw it away. Put this red meat out. Missed a piece. Took that little part out right there. Come to this side. Put that out. All gone. Now you got two big old chunks. You come over here. Cut this side. Come over here. And you cut this side. So that's it guys, we've cleaned the fish, not all of them, we still have more to clean, but I'm not going to record the video to do it, because I'm sure you guys have the idea of what we need to do. Alright everybody, so I've had the fish here soaking for a while, so let me show you what I do next. So now I get me a gallon Ziploc bag, I'm going to set it over here in this other sink. So what I do now is I'll turn the water on. Got my sprayer. Basically, it just rinse off the meat before I put it in the bag. You see any blood spots? Just concentrate on them a little more. And then your meat should look nice and white. You throw it in the bag. And you just continue to do that. Like, see this pink meat? Uh, I think this is part of the belly meat. If not, then it's from one of the bigger fish. So on these, you'll have to concentrate a little bit more, throw a little bit more water on there. But it's okay if it stays pink. It's not going to be solid white like the other ones. It's thicker meat. And we'll have some of the blood in it and so on. But that one's clean and ready to go. That's pretty much it. Um, I'm pretty sure we'll fill this bag up, but when I get to the end, I'll start the video again so you can see how much we caught today. Um, I didn't even count how many fish uh, I caught, but you'll see in the video there's quite a bit. 
And I got to give a shout out to another guy that was out there with me. I don't know his name. He never told me. He was really a quiet guy. But um, he was trying to fish for flatheads, but he said there was too many blues there. So he, what he was doing was catching blues from inside the spillway and putting them on the other side of the spillway so that it would kind of thin out the blues that were there. Um, but the big ones he was catching, he would give to me. So uh, the biggest ones that y'all saw in the video were actually not ones I caught, but I mean, we were there catching them together. So um, I appreciate that. More food on the table for me and my kids. I don't have to worry about starving. But yeah, we did pretty good today. We've got a whole dripping gallon bag full, pretty much. They were all blue cats. I caught some yellows and a carp. Uh, tons of drum this morning. And again, I apologize about the video. I've got to figure it out how to record in the heat because all my devices overheat and the batteries drain real quick. So I might have to put an umbrella out there or something to kind of shade me when I'm out there. I don't know. Uh, it's just starting to get to where it's a little bit overwhelming how much stuff I have to set up just to record. I'll probably just won't take as many poles now. I'll just take two poles with me. Uh, one for catfish and one for bait fish. I don't know. Maybe three poles, two for catfish and one for bait fish instead of the four that I take. Uh, one pole would make a difference. But I was told today that at the spillway you can only use two poles but I had the park ranger come by uh, probably about two, three months ago before I started making the videos and he told me that you could have three poles and then when you're not at the dam you could have whatever the state law is which is seven per person so I've had several people tell me it's only two but I haven't had a game warden tell me anything um, we've had a game wardens come out there before and never said anything uh, but I did ask the park ranger out there and he did tell me that it was three poles that we could have out there so as far as I know, that's all we can have out there, and I'm really burnt, really, really burnt. And my fiance is like, oh, it must be very uh, hard getting a golden tan all the time. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I did order some new rods. They should be here tomorrow. They should be here tomorrow. They're, I believe, from a brand called H2O something or other. They're called Roughnecks. So I ordered three of them and they were a little more they were fifteen dollars a piece so i ordered three of them um and they come in tomorrow and i'm gonna change all my rods over give those a shot and see how i like them but i hope you guys enjoyed the video and y'all stick around for more fishing with chris this red tomato guy with mungie fishing i appreciate it make sure you guys like subscribe and share with your friends and if you guys have any information or anything that I've said that was wrong that I need to change, I'll correct it next video. Any comments or anything that you want to say, shout out, anything like that, just put them in the comments and I'll try to get them in on the next video, alright? Alright, talk to you guys later.